Master Colonel Cedric Layton and Military Analyst General Spider Marks. All right, great to have all of you with us. Uh, but uh, President Sarkis, really let me start with you. You were just in Kiev. You've been there all week. Uh, what do you see on the ground? Are you surprised to hear this at all? No, I'm not surprised. Actually, when in 2008 Georgia was invaded by Moscow, uh, you know, by Russian army, uh, I was warning them. I was warning prior to that invasion that first Georgia will come and then Ukraine will come. That's the Putin is following his blueprint all the way through. And actually, uh, it coincidentally it happened both times during the or around the time of Olympics. Then it was Beijing Olympics, and now it's Sochi Olympics. And actually, the blueprint is exactly the same as they applied in Georgia. The same scale. This kind of so-called unidentified troops that basically are regular to regular special mm -hmm. units of Russian army. We've seen them and we know them very well. We know them handwriting it is exactly the same thing and we are talking right now about full scale basically for full scale for legally and technically for full scale military invasion that's all it is i mean they will gradually build it up it's not even based on some mass scale local movements so putin is not even disguising it anymore we're right. talking about 20, in 21st century invasion of 45 million people and country as a response to, to, to a democratic revolution that got rid of a bloody tyrant that and, fled to Russia. And I just, I'm just as you're speaking, uh, President Saakashvili, the, this news is just coming in. The House Intelligence Committee Chairman Mike Rogers has just put out a statement that's very significant for people watching around the world tonight. Quote, it appears the Russian military now controls the Crimean Peninsula. This aggression is a threat not only to Ukraine but to regional peace and stability. Russia's latest action is not a, yet another indicator of Vladimir Putin's hegemonic ambitions threaten American interests and allies around the world. But obviously another development there that this is not just a few hundred troops, or if it is, they control now the Crimean uh, Peninsula. Let me bring you in on this, uh, General Marks. What does that mean? Does that change the game here? What does that mean for the United States, where the president has just said today that there will be consequences? Aaron, the real issue here is that Crimea is a part of the Ukraine. Um, the citizens of Crimea enjoy no additional uh, sovereignty, sovereignty rights uh, beyond what Ukraine would, although the Crimea tends to lend, lend itself and its support and lean in the direction of Russia. That's irrelevant. Sure, right. Well, that's irrelevant in this case because they're citizens of the Ukraine. And so what, let, we need to call it what it is, which is an invasion of one sovereign nation of another irrespective of how Putin has done it, either at a lower level and now with the threat of some additional forces. Yeah. So, Colonel Layton, what does this mean, though, for, uh, for the United States? It says that there's going to be costs and consequences if the Crimean Peninsula, which is part of Ukraine, has now been invaded and is now controlled by Vladimir Putin. Well, I think, that, Aaron, it's going to be a situation where if the United States really wants to stand up to uh, the Russian invasion of the Crimea, then it's going to have to do something, and that could include economic consequences. For example, there could be such a thing as an embargo against Russian oil, mm -hmm. uh, against Russian natural gas. That would have significant effects on Europe and would have to be coordinated with NATO. But those are some of the things that we could do short of military force in a case like this. So, so as President Saakashvili, how bad could this get? When you were, when you were president of Georgia, uh, hundreds of people were killed. Tanks came in. Troops came in. I mean, is this just the beginning for well, Ukraine? The, 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 I think it's just the beginning. And actually, last time, some people were trying to argue that it's irresponsible behavior of Georgia that provoked it. Well, what would you say this time? I mean, this is a pattern. And Vladimir Putin is following his pattern no matter who does what. And actually, the, and the, real, the reality is that, you know, the, it very much is reminiscent of what happened in the 20th century, very much like, you know, Anschluss of um, the Sudetenland by then Nazi Germany, but, but, and then, of course, the way how a big conflict started in Europe. Now, this time, exactly the way how back in that European powers had responsibility for Poland, uh, the United States, the, U the United Kingdom, and by the way, also Russia, together pledged to guarantee territorial integrity in 94 of Ukraine in 1994 That's when right. Ukraine gave up its nuclear mm -hmm. weapons. So there is a treaty obligation that the Western powers will have, have for this not to happen. Now Russia blatantly violated its own treaty obligations. So basically we are talking, I mean all the way through Western powers have been repeating there is no more Cold War. Well first of all there was always Cold War for Putin all those time. Now, now we are really getting to really, really 
hot war in Europe. And this is an exceptional circumstances. Okay. And when I'm talking about annexation, Russian Duma has just done a draft uh, that makes it easy to integrate other countries' territories into Russia. This is unheard of. We are talking about Europe, 21st century. Somebody's just coming and trying to... So you to think the, the, the analogy you just gave is a very powerful one. You're talking about Nazi Germany going into the Sudetenland. That well, you think I mean, that legally, this... legally, there yeah. is not much of a difference because this guy, Vladimir Putin, now goes into another big European country, its neighbor, mm -hmm. and wants to grab a piece of its territory. And in parallel, a Russian Duma is discussing law how to make this territory part of Russia. Uh, now, uh, I mean, this, this is, goes beyond anything that people could ever contemplate in this part of the world, that this is really, really serious stuff. Okay. Colonel Layton, could re reply to what President Saakashvili is saying, though, and he's saying, look, that there's a treaty that it's violated. I mean, you know, the parallels here to World War II are pretty powerful. So what does the United States do if there is this treaty? If sit back and say it's sanctions, is that enough? Well, it should follow the, the tenets of the treaty, no doubt. And I agree with President Shalkashvili that there are certain treaty obligations that the United States and NATO have when it comes to protecting the integrity of the Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Notice, though, that the President did not invoke those uh, when he spoke uh, this afternoon at no. the White House, nor has Secretary of State Kerry. And that indicates to me that the United States is not willing to go that extra mile. Uh, what would you say, Spider? You agree with that? The United States not willing to go that extra mile, and if so, to the to the parallel that, that President Saakashvili just gave, what does that mean happens next? Well, the parallel is very stark, and it makes complete sense. The yep. precedent has been set. Um, the United States clearly will not act alone, nor should it act alone. The initial steps right now should be what can be what can take place now, short of military action, that would be su su sufficiently convincing to Putin that he needs to stop what he's doing. We haven't demonstrated that we can do that. We certainly don't have any influence in the region. But we do have friends. We have allies. We have NATO. We have the ability to try to influence and wedge ourselves in there. Right now, the concern is that we have a waning level of influence, and it needs to be reasserted. And it's going to be very, very difficult for the United States to do that alone, nor should it. All right. Well, we're going to hit pause on this. We're going to come back in just a moment with much more of this conversation. Obviously, a significant question for the United States. Former head of the CIA, someone I spoke to about this with a very stark warning. We're going to have that. President Saakashvili will weigh in. We also have new backlash against Spike Lee. Are people now targeting his family's home because of his expletive-filled rant on gentrification? And a man in Mississippi declared dead and sent to a funeral home 